Look at what the Pope is doing. We've pointed out this uh, every, every day. The Pope does something else that is not involved with religion, not involved with Christianity, but is involved with politics. Today he met with the top imam, and he embraced uh, Islam in a historic Vatican meeting. Pope Francis embraced the grand imam of Cairo, or their largest mosque there, the Al-Azhar Mosque at the Vatican on Monday. This man is the highest authority in Sunni Islam. And the Pope said, our meeting is the message. In other words, the message you should take away from this meeting is that we are meeting here. We're having a peace conference. There he is again, crying peace, peace, when there is no peace. He says, we need to take a joint stance. We need hand in hand to bring happiness to humanity. Divine religions were revealed to make people happy, not to cause them hardship. Hmm. Well, okay, I have to ask, is this what Islam imposes? Does it impose any hardship, or is it just there to make people happy? Uh, is it making Christians in Saudi Arabia happy? Is it making women happy when it oppresses them? Is it making gays happy when it throws them off of roofs? See, the problem with this is the fact that the Pope, as we pointed out last week, has criticized our efforts in the West to try to bring democracy and tolerance to Islamic countries, while he praises Muslims who come here. He has nothing to say about Jesus, and yet what he represents is a merging of religion and politics, because all the Pope talks about is politics, how he can deconstruct Western society, deconstruct free markets, and impose a global world governance on what we do here. And so yet we see yet another example of that. And look at what Obama does when he sells us his religion. We've got Obama appointing a transgender person to an advisory faith council. Uh, this person is uh, David Satin. And I have to look at this and I say, well, first of all, besides appointing a transgender person to his advisory faith council, why would we have an advisory faith council from the American government? I thought we were supposed to have this wall of separation, the liberals tell us, between church and state. So why do we have an advisory faith council as a federal government function? Why do they get involved at all? See, the wall of separation was supposed to wall in the federal government. That phrase is not in the Constitution. It's not in the Bill of Rights. It was simply a letter that Thomas Jefferson sent to some people who were concerned that he was going to come around and confiscate their Bibles. That's what John Adams was telling people during the campaign. And so he said, no, 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 there is a wall of separation between the government and you. In other words, the government is walled in. And yet now we have the government selling us its values, propagating its values, threatening to take school lunches away from poor children if we don't allow their transgender tyranny, as we see from Barack Obama. And that's precisely what we're seeing from the Pope. You know, going back to this meeting here, he said he presented this imam, who is the highest imam uh, of Sunni religion, with a copy of his recent encyclical, a letter to the faithful in which he urges the world to wake up to the threat posed by climate change and economic inequality. You see, it is a merging of religion and state that makes what the Pope is doing so dangerous. It is a merging of religion and state, which is what makes Islam dangerous. And it is a merging of Obama's social engineering as if it were a religious value that makes what he is doing so dangerous. This is the key here. And he adds that the imam wants to promote true Islam. Well, true Islam is really a merging of church and state. Where are the people who have a problem with that in the liberal agenda? Now, look at this last story here. We have a security guard who was arrested in Washington, D.C. She was arrested for removing a man from a woman's bathroom. A female security guard working at a Washington, D.C. grocery store was arrested Monday afternoon, this last Monday, for physically escorting a woman out of the woman's room after he refused to leave because he identifies himself as a woman, he says. Now, they said this was a suspected hate crime. In other words, it was hateful for this female security guard to remove this man out of the restroom because she perceived him as a threat, as an affront. He says that he was emotionally traumatized by the incident. Do we care if women and children are emotionally traumatized by men going into the restrooms because they feel like it? We don't care about the vast majority of people. No, for this transgender tyranny, we are going to let the small minority 
lord it over everyone else. And he says, um, the security guard told him, you guys cannot keep coming in here and using our women's restroom. They did not pass the law yet. See, that's the problem. They really don't care what women and young girls believe about this, how they feel about this. They don't want to protect them or even have any concern about their emotional trauma about this.